it was. I mean, an observation that um, you are a perpetual contemnor. You are always in contempt of parliament. And the person recalled that in the ninth assembly that um, a lot of invitations sent to you by the public account committee of that net assembly was uh, deliberately ignored and that you refused to also submit documents to them. No. Now, that was what was said. But what, that is also what has been confirmed now. You don't need to shake your head. It's been confirmed. Because this is not the first time, not the second, not the third time that you have been given opportunities to come before this committee. And I remember the last time that your ED came to represent you. We gave him that honor to okay, represent him, which is very unusual. We don't give that, um, we don't allow that. We want the chief executive, who is the accounting officer, to make presentation himself. But we gave you that honor then. And I remember that there were a lot of gaps in the documents submitted, and he was asked to go and come back with rectified document, which, as I speak, has not been done till today. So it's like you just you just feel very comfortable to um, to treat invitations and requests for documents with so much um, laxity, disrespect. And my colleague has asked you a very important question: Say you travel, that even if you travel, did you carry the office along with you? The office is bigger than the occupier of the office. Every office is bigger, it's larger than the occupier of the office because the, the office, the, you know, the office will um, will not leave you. So how you manage, and this is an office that is saddled with a very, very critical responsibility, Rural Education Agency. I don't find it funny at all the way you, <laughs> the way you treat, uh, the way you treat the National Assembly. It's not funny at all. But yes, um, I don't know. thank you, Mr. Chair. Find out from the newspapers, or you found out from the correspondence from the National Assembly. My. My director uh, called me and informed me. He just informed you last night? Of this particular meeting today, this morning, yes, sir. And when did your director receive it? Uh, he said to me that he was also called on it. Uh, just uh, as I had Was he called or did he receive an invitation from the Public Accounts Committee? No, he was called. By who? Um, he didn't... He was called by the Secretariat. Okay, a, by the Secretariat. That was that a reminder or that was the first time that notice was given? That was the first time I had uh, learned of this particular meeting and I had already admitted that we missed the publication. Well, my chairman just, my chairman just uh, said it now that it was a reminder. A reminder means something has been sent before now. Mr. MD, this is the 10th National Assembly is the most colorful assembly in the history of parliament in Nigeria. Mr. MD, I want you to take us very seriously because looking at your antecedents, Mr. MD, I want to assure you, if this is not worth taking, Mr. MD, we are looking for scapegoats in Nigeria. Mr. MD, we are elected, we are not appointed. Mr. MD, I want to tell you, if you had your way with ninth assembly, Mr. MD, you can never have your way with 10th Assembly. Mr. MD, my chairman, I'm going to move a motion because if we start entertaining this without anything in front of us, Mr. Chairman, we are wasting our time. We have other agencies we want to meet. Since he does not have this literature in front of us, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move a motion. I'm going to move a motion. I remember Chief Dr. Billy Famous Osawaru representing the good people of Orion Wode Federal Constituency. Mr. Chairman, I move that until we have these papers in front of us, we are going to move that the MD go back, make those literatures available to us, so that when we are talking, we are not going to be repeating ourselves. We are not going to have a session after one hour. He's going to come back again. We start all over. Mr. Chairman, I so moved. Well, thank you, Honorable Member. Before Can we you, give? you didn't specify the length of time you want, whether a year or a week or a month, such that that can uh, guide us. And uh, I know that from what people are saying from the side visits, you should be able to respond to the specifics like uh, Honorable Chuba has uh, mentioned.
Thank you very much. And, yes, sir, please. Now, um, you were the head of the... Guys, sit down. Just leave the camera and go down. You were the head of the agency while those funds were released. Since those funds were released and utilized, have you done an on-spot assessment yourself as the head of that agency since those funds were released, particularly in my zone, the southwest? You should have done an on-spot assessment for all zones, but I'm talking about particularly in the southwest. Did you do an on-spot assessment or did you set a team out to do an on-spot assessment of the utilized funds for what they were meant for? And do you have um, video evidence or pictorial evidence of when those projects were completed? Because I know for a fact that every federal government project has a billboard sort of when it starts and when it's completed. Do you have those? And can you make them readily available for us? Thank you. So that you know that what I was saying actually has a basis. The Auditor General for the Federation carried out an audit exercise on the Rural Electrification Agency in 2022 on the expenditure of the COVID-19 fund. And uh, they came up with um, a few issues, one of which has to do with the payment for a contract that was awarded to a company called Iron McJ Resources Investment Limited at a sum of 178 million 146,115 naira seven kobo for 139 solar street lights to be located at Osin Aremu Basic Health Center and surrounding communities in Kwara State. The Auditor General carried out a physical inspection of that contract and could only cite five solar powered lights. Five and did not see 134 and asked the rear to respond as we speak 2024 rear has not responded to that query as we speak and the sum to be refunded by rare on that contract is 128.8 million naira that is just on one item, a project in uh, Osin and Mukwara State. That's only one out of several others. I won't talk about the North Central uh, oversight because I've not received the report officially. But I want to tell you that I had quite a lot also about the inspection to this site. So, um, yes, please, sir, you can move your amendment now. Sir, I will second the motion, but we Amendment. Yes, please. I'm Honorable Matthew Mogu, representing Abomise Ngobala Federal Constituency. I think there should be a time limit to the time we give him. We can't give him an open ended time. We should ask, I will amend the motion to state that he has one week, seven days. Honorable colleague, we don't have that leisure of time. As you see me, I'm already getting... Okay, Chairman, if not one week, let us give him three days. Just, By the leave of the just a moment. Honorable, uh, 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 don't worry. Let's, let's do it this way. You see, COVID-19 is just uh, a side assignment of this committee. Our main assignment, the Auditor General for the Federation has submitted the 2020 Auditor, Auditor, Auditor General's report. We have quite a lot of work to do. We can't keep on uh, COVID-19 for forever. So, uh, we'll be giving you 24 hours to submit all your documents. That is by close of work tomorrow, Friday, and appearance on Monday at 10 a.m. to defend your expenditure of over 12 billion naira as COVID-19 expenditure. Thank you very much. So, you can uh, take your leave, uh, Rhea. Um, honorable colleague, let me, before we call the next agency, let me quickly also give us this information and I want the media to be um, a part of this information and uh, there's also a motion to that effect there is a, a federal ministry the federal ministry of trade uh, industries and uh, investment 
that got a sum of 75 billion naira as COVID-19 intervention fund. 75 billion naira. The Public Account Committee has sent invitations to the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Investment three times. And none of the area we can you can leave. None of the invitations has been honored. The Federal Ministry of Trade, where is the the Ministry of the Federal Ministry of Trade was to make their appearance yesterday. That was the last opportunity that was given. And there was no such appearance. Seventy five billion naira was appropriated to them. I want to call on Honorable Akiba. Honorable Akiba, is he in the house? Honorable Akiba. Akiba. Are you ready with your motion? Are you ready? Yes, please. Yes, please. Sit down and uh, please uh, move your motion on this matter. Uh, the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment have been given the invitation to appear and explain, they have been given the invitation to appear before this committee, this constitutional committee, to explain the usage, the application of the sum of 75 billion. And up, and up to you now. I remain Honorable Attorney Martin Wogu. I second the motion ably moved by my friend Honorable Akiba. I so second. Basis, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues. Basi Akiba is my name. I move with using the relevant section of the financial regulations. I move that this very ministry be asked to refund the sum of 75 billion to government. I so move. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there my name is Chihuma Isaac, Director of Finance and Accounts, Federal Minister of Health. Why is it decide in an interest earning account? Or is it fixed? And if it is fixed, who is collecting the interest rate? Unfortunately, uh, with all due respect, sir, I can't answer for the Accountant General's because, office. But, madam, nobody puts money in the bank and not using it. Okay, and uh, some of us here have been there and done that. So you collect this kind of money, you put it in the bank, and every month, over, overnight borrowing, those that did finance, uh, you, you, somebody's collecting billions for the last <coughs> two years, three years. Okay. Chairman, you. we need to seriously look at Thank this. Thank you, Honorable Yeah, because when you said the money is in GIFMIS, I was wondering, GIFMIS is actually a platform. It's not like a place where it's a platform for administering the fund. So the money should be somewhere, either with the CBN or with the bank or whatever it is. You know, the, the GIFMIS is like the platform for the administration of the fund. Well, any second to the motion, uh, Mobile Honorable Oshaba? Any second to the motion? Yes, yes Honorable Oshaba? You want more chairman? Interesting that of all contractors in Nigeria, in one instance, one contractor was given was given seven slots or six slots. In another, another contractor was given five slots. So, isn't it interesting, madam, that one will assume that has to be a conflict of interest somewhere? Why one contractor, MS? Step go we win five contracts where there are millions of contractors in Nigeria. In another instance, in another instance, MOS Mendrix will win six contract contracts where there are millions of contractors in Nigeria. What is the difference in their bidding that warranted you to award this contract to only two contractors out of 14 has 12 of these contracts? Thank you, Honorable. Um, any other question of the uh, PAMSEC in discussing this to give us some uh, insights into why the ongoing projects have not yet been completed uh, three years uh, down the line? Um, my first question about that is whether you have funds uh, to pay as soon as these people have, uh, have when these people complete 
or when they complete, you start running around. Although one would ordinarily expect that these funds will still be there. But it's a question I would want you to answer. And then uh, another question I would want to ask. At 178 uh, million, year about, for the procurement and installation of medical waste in incinerators, uh, I think I've been to Otibohai, uh, Irwa, and I'm just imagining whether you would say that 178 million, since that's about the average for each of them, if it's good for, val uh, we got, this country got value for money that was spent, looking at what was, was on ground and the amount of money spent. I want you to speak to that, whether in all conscience this country got value for money for each of uh, uh, that. Then the states where the um, supply and installation of maintenance of oxygen plants, you just listed six states, nine states, 12 states, 10 states. I've tried to put that together to make a 37. Uh, I, I know you're including the federal capital territory, but I would have preferred a situation where the names of the states are stated to each of the expenditures such that with the uh, differences in the expenditure on each of these uh, uh, locations, one will be able to tell the number of states covered and know that that is why, for instance, number three is 2.2 billion, whereas number one is just 1 billion. So that we know that there's some fairness in this uh, spread. In fact, that leads me to the incinerators. You only have about 14 sites out of 37 states. And uh, I'm quickly looking for my state and a few other states that are not there. And I wonder why you excluded us. And uh, if you didn't exclude the geopolitical uh, matching, whether these 14 are evenly spread among the six geopolitical zones, uh, those are the questions I'll have for you for now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Madam, you can just take note of those questions so that you can take them, um, you know, in batches. Uh, does anyone have any other question? Uh, since the Auditor General raised this issue in uh, maybe 2022 or there about till now, there has not been any formal response or explanation from the Federal Ministry of Health to the Auditor General for the Federation on this money. I, I think some people need to really, really... Uh, so some people didn't need to ask a lot of yeah, questions on this. But, but, um, but, but um, before then, can you answer the question? Yes, that, the uh, money is, is domiciled in the gift miss account of the Accountant General of the Federation. The gift miss account of the Accountant General of the Federation. So you, don't, you don't have access to the money. It's, no. it, so now, you know, you know what? Um, Nigeria, <coughs> the federal government, is short of funds those funds the value of those funds three years ago and the value right now i'm sure you understand what i'm yeah, saying I do. if you agree with me they are going to do things differently and that's why you said covid 19 we don't need to produce vaccines again at this point but not covid 19 vaccines I think um, what we need is for that money to be returned and then you apply for the funds again if you need it to do something that currently needs to be done. So on this note, Chairman, I want to move that those funds be returned and utilized for very, very urgent, national, important things. When you need funds like that again, they can make funds readily available for you. Not just keep 10 billion naira, which was equivalent to, God knows, three, 30 million dollars before. Now it's less than 10 million dollars or something. It's become one third of the value as we speak in three years. So let that money be returned. Let the federal government and Nigerians use it for something that will be beneficial to us. When you need funds for other things, you can apply and budgetary allocation will be made for you. So I move a motion that the money should be returned to be used for very important, urgent things. Chairman, thank you. Good 
morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, distinguished members. My name is Mohammed Abdullahi, Director of Procurement. PPP approval for the inclusion of um, MS Supreme Meditech Limited in your um, award of contract. I seem not to find them from the list of companies approved by the BPP uh, for you to consider for the award of this emergency contract. Uh, Mrs. MS Supreme Meditech. Um, um ms is that is it ms cresto that's number is that number four yes number four is um yes ms cresto parkour limited and um m equipment therapeutic limited i need you to please provide uh the ppp documents that um, approve those contracting firms for the released to the Federal Ministry of Health this, from, uh, since December 2020, but which had not been used nor returned to the government coffer, be returned to the uh, Federation account within seven days, and that the Ministry should supply evidence of such return. Say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Um, Madam, we expect you to submit evidence of uh, remittance of that money back to, to government within seven days to the Public Account Committee and also supply all other documents and information so observed and required. So we're going to adjourn your hearing and give you a fresh date for continuation and completion of this hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank You're you, most members. welcome, Madam. And, and, and my, my regards to your Honorable Minister. I will, sir. He is one of the finest men we have in the land. Thank you very I, much. I, I don't have any regret saying that. I will. Thank you very my much. My regards to him. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, rural Identification Agency should take the seats. Rural Identification Agency. Ijo, the Managing Director of the Rural Electrification Agency. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chairman, distinguished members, and the Secretariats. My name is Chief Olani Yalabani Dufo, Executive Director of Corporate Services, Royal Education Agency. Uh, Secretary, can you remind me, are they on oath already? No, they have not. Are they? No. No, okay. Okay, you came once. Was it on this matter or on, uh, on the general report? It was on the What was the duration of the contract that you awarded to... Um, M Equipment Therapeutic Limited by the letter of award, when are they supposed to have completed and delivered you know, the project by the letter of award and the contract that was signed between the uh, federal government and that uh, company? Thank you. So you can take those ones first. If you look at the award letter It is it's it reads like this, sir. Are you are you adopting whatever you submitted as your document? On that oath? Yes, you do. Okay. If you adopt this as your document, go ahead and tell us the variations. There was that was the, the sum people approved. One point three was the sum people approved. But the Federal Executive Council augmented the contract and jacked up the price to 1.5 billion. If you look at the award letter, here, yeah, it's written in the award letter. What is written in the award letter? I read the award letter out for you, sir. What is written in the award letter? 1.5 billion. 1.5 billion? Yes, that was an augmentation from the Federal Executive Council. Yes. No, just a moment. The award letter indicated 1.5 billion naira for the contract. Yes. 
But the first award letter Madam uh, referred us to indicated 1.3 billion. The letter on page 24 of your volume 2, which I have here, indicated 1 billion 329 million 898,713.4. So which award letter are you referring to, uh, Director of Finance? Which other award letter? This is for the supply, installation, and maintenance of nine oxygen production plants and construction of plant houses in Kogi, Benue, Kebi, Jigawa, Yobe, Cross River, and Kiti, Lagos, and the Boy. Yes, please. Page 27. Page 27. Did you issue two award letters? Did you issue two award letters on this contract? The Director of Finance. Did the Ministry of Health issue two award letters on yes, this contract? Sir. Yes, sir. If you look Use at your microphone, please. My microphone is on. If you look at page 24, the date of Ju the Just wait, one after the other, please. Yes, sir. Did the Ministry issue two award letters on this same contract? Yes, sir. You say company. Oh, okay, so why did you issue two award letters? There was an augmentation of the contract. So a new award letter had to be issued to reflect the total sum that was augmented by the prior executive council. When you, are, when you issued the second award letter, did you withdraw the first award letter? Yes. And is it indicated in that letter? The first award letter was no, withdrawn. No, no, answer my question. When you issued the second award letter, did you say this award letter replaces the first award letter dated if you read the content, no, 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 answer, the question, yes. answer the question whether the, the first letter was um, withdrawn. was withdrawn before you issued another contract on this uh, another letter on the same contract. Everything is explained in the body of the letter. That's why I said, let me take you through the letter, director. Yes, sir. Listen, the facts speak for themselves. You cannot read your own and read our own. The question is. When you issued the second award letter, did you state in that body of the letter that so so such award letter issued to you previously has been withdrawn and been replaced with this one? Did you say that in that body of the letter? And and, uh, and uh, in in addition, please, um, I, I'm I'm really curious about this. Um, so-called augmentation. I'm really curious. Uh, this is a country that operates by law. And there's a law that's called the Pro Public Procurement Act of the National Assembly, which is the law that covers all procurement by public agencies. So where did this augmentation to this tune, where did it come from, uh, Permanent Secretary? This augmentation, where, where is it coming from? that the BPP has looked through your document and approved that you award a contract at a certain sum and you issued a letter to the contractor in accordance with the BPP uh, uh, directive and then you come up to issue another letter on the same contract at a higher figure and you claim there was an, uh, an augmentation. Where is it coming from? Put off your microphone, Director of Finance. Let the PS address this matter, please. Uh, thank you. Honorable uh, Chairman, I don't know where the augmentation came from. I have a, the desk officer who was in charge, who handled everything. If he can speak, I will, as I said, I was not in health then. So I do who was that desk officer? Dr. Shetak, are you here? Are you on oath? What's, no. your, what's your designation? What is your designation? Excuse me, please. They are doing our work, please. Let's be patient with them, please. Please. Uh, what's your designation? I'm the deputy director and I'm the next officer. Use the microphone. Okay, are you on oath? No. Okay, uh, Madam Pierce, you want us to put him on oath? You you think he should uh, take responsibility yes. for this explanation? Yes, I do, sir. Okay, so uh, I so approve. Uh, please put him on oath. And then, um, let me give you one good privilege. You can come and sit there. Just move to that place. You take your oath, and then um, 
you can also answer some of the questions. Uh, gentlemen of the press, Bialy, those handling the camera, please uh, allow the members to see the, you know, when you have an oversight. What we noticed was that whenever these medical facilities had, for example, a TED bedded ICU, eventually what they would tell us is that they got appropriation again in the capital budget apart from the COVID-19 intervention fund and then they now expanded to 20 bedded, 30 bedded and then in the books we'll probably see things like appropriation for 30 beds. So it looks like it's duplication because they knew they got approval in the COVID intervention funds for a 10 bedded ICU. What now happens is in the main budget, they request for the same thing, but more numbers. So I think you need to look into that. Because that, 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 that happened in a few places we went to, where they said, no, we don't have a 10 bedded ICU any longer, that we used to have five beds for ICU. Now we have about 30 beds. Then they have people donating beds to them, donating equipment to them. And they are showing us those equipments as the COVID-19 intervention equipment. So you need to look into that and do a proper inventory of the COVID-19 intervention funds and the equipments that were supplied for COVID-19 intervention funds. Because it's a smart way of duplicating and just pulling out money from the federal government. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. Um, Madam Sela, you, will, you, want to, you want to respond to that? Yes, please. I would like to. Okay, can you also take this in addition yeah. there? Uh, we're on receipt of um, a report by the Attorney General for the Federation as a result of the um, special audit exercise carried out by that office on the Federal Ministry of Health on the COVID-19 uh, financing. And uh, the report indicated that there is a sum of 10 billion Naira that was released to you by the federal government on the 29th of December 2020 uh, for you to construct a vaccine production plant, 10 billion naira, to construct a vaccine production plant. And the Director General uh, says or claims that um, as at the time of this audit in September of 2022, there was no such plant constructed or equipped by the Federal Ministry of Health, 10 billion naira. And there is no evidence that that money had been returned to the coffers of the federal government. I would like you to address this very important observation by the Auditor General for the Federation, in addition to those other issues you want to speak about. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Members. I would like to start by saying thank you for the questions for the observations raised and most importantly for the feedback. I would like to state categorically, sir, that I'm not casting aspersions on anybody, but I'd like to say that the new administration in the Federal Ministry of Health is a new administration and we intend to superintend over the Federal Ministry of Health openly for the whole world to see and that things will be done differently. Differently in the sense that you will know what we are doing in the Federal Ministry of Health. Unfortunately, all the questions being raised, I only have what I have been told because I was not there. On why if we have a BPP document on the other companies. I have a document that BPP gave and I wish they were here so that they could respond. An overall uh, certificate of no objection to the Federal Ministry of Health for all the plans, the incinerators and every other item dated August 13th, 2021. But for the other one that the honorable member is asking for, for other companies. It is not listed. All I have is a certificate of no objection for every project for the COVID-19 as given by PPP. And as I said, I wish they were here 
So I cannot provide that. But if you give us time, we could go back and look for it, sir. So what they gave you was just a, a, a general blanket, cover? Yes, a blanket. And but we want the itemized covers. So we will look for that. We'll for get each back one of them. them. Thank you very much. On the issue of uh, incinerators in other hospitals after oversight and the equipment of COVID-19, I assure you we'll definitely look into that. Because if items were donated for COVID-19, they are for COVID-19. If they were purchased by government funds, they should be listed as government funds. And we are taking an overhaul and inventory of everything in every federal te uh, tertiary hospital presently. That is what we're doing now. Before the 2024 budget is even applied, we are already doing that. As to the last but not the least, very important, 10 billion, which was meant for the production of a COVID-19 vaccine. Unfortunately, sir, this has caused a lot of issues, even within the Federal Ministry of Health. The money is still there. The money is where? It's still there. The money is What's, the, what's the meaning of there? In federal government coffers of the ministry. It has in the federal government, in the consolidated uh, revenue of the federation? In the federal ministry of health coffers. It was oh, the money is still with the federal ministry of health? Yes. It's here. That is, I have the... No, the madam, case. just wait. It's not about, I, what, I, no, I want it's, to explain it's not about to what you have. No, I want to explain to you. Okay, go ahead. Happened. Explain. Let me, let me when listen. When I first. came on board four months ago, we were informed the same time as the ministers. There is a 10 billion COVID-19 fund that has not been utilized, and it was meant for production of COVID-19 vaccines. The former administration had some issues. They could not come up with whether they were going to give it for the production of COVID-19 or not. But there was a company, BioVaccines, or there is a company, rather, BioVaccines Nigeria Limited, that is on ground that should have produced the vaccines. But there were issues. I don't know what the issues were. But we've had series of meetings. The coordinating minister of health, al Haji uh, Mohammed Pate, the minister of state, Dr. Tunji Alausa, myself, the department, and the federal ministry of finance. And the last meeting we held prior to the Christmas celebration, uh, celebration was, it was agreed by MOFI, Ministry of Finance Incorporated, the Federal Ministry of Finance, Federal Ministry of Health, and the Biovaccine, that the sum of the of ten, uh, Bank of Industry, the sum of 10 billion, this amount, considering MOFI is in charge of all federal government assets, that the Federal Ministry of Health is to transfer these money in the presence of Bank of Industry, Ministry of Finance, and MOFI, to MOFI. Was it to MOFI or to Bank? Yes, to MOFI. Because MOFI is in charge of all federal government assets. So moving forward, MOFI will work with biovaccines to ensure, because the line, the budget line indicates production of COVID-19 vaccines. And we said COVID-19 is over and done with. These are federal government funds. Federal Republic of Nigeria needs companies. We need to produce locally, local pharmaceuticals. The minister has been having conversations. I cannot speak for the minister. But having conversations yes. on how to spend the money? Yeah. On, no, on how to... We actually agreed to utilize, not to spend it, to utilize the money. Yes, <laughs> to sir. utilize? Yes, sir. Not to spend? Sir, choice of words. <laughs> choice of words. To utilize, to utilize, not to yes. spend. Well, utilization inadvertently is spending, but for now we are talking about utilization of funds. You are discussing on how to, to utilize move. monies that was released to you uh, in 2020, 10 billion naira for uh, a specific purpose. Sir, and you kept the money in your ministry till uh, this time. As I said, without, uh, I without use. And then, madam, one, one, one very uh, unacceptable thing you have also done, yes, very, very unacceptable, is to hold back that information from your presentation. No, I you, was as, just a moment, no. just a moment, please. Is to hold back that, that information from your presentation. The oath you took is to tell us the truth, the whole truth. Excuse me, please. 
And if this question hadn't been asked, the Ministry of Health would have kept a sum of 10 billion naira, which was meant as COVID-19 fund to itself. No. You gave us, yes, you didn't give us the whole truth. You should have, excuse me, please. please you should have included that in your submission to this honorable committee to let us know or let Nigerians know that you have this sum of money released to you by federal government which you haven't spent and haven't returned back to the cost of the federal government. We found that um, a little bit a little bit curious. <laughs> so may I, may I you, you know, uh, no, madam, you don't, you may not need to say anything. We have had you let members just respond to the explanations that you have made and then um, we can, yes. Uh, Thank you, chairman. Saying? Madam, what I need to clarify is this. The money, 10 billion, is domiciled where? The Ministry of Health is not a bank. Where is that money domiciled, first of all? Let us be clear about that. Is it with the CBN? Is it with a commercial bank? Where is the money exactly? Where is it domiciled? Before I go on with what I want to say. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Member. I would like to clarify, Mr. Chairman. I did not hold back. I had it here. I was actually waiting for us to finish so that I would tell you. I've had it ever since that we have 10 billion. Madam, you, have, you have a submission here. Yes. This is your submission. Yes. This is your document. Yes. We are, we are a house that deals with documents. We don't, it's the oral testimony cannot override whatever is not included here. And in, in the whole of your document, there is nowhere you indicate or indicated that you have a 10 billion naira sitting or lying somewhere then that has not been used. I take, I Just take a moment. Yeah, you should take a responsibility for that. And then. The second review went to BVP. They gave no objection. Okay. Another member aligned where. Okay, director, let me, let, me, let me interrupt you. Where, where is the letter that the, that the companies wrote to tell you that um, they, they can't, they can't uh, execute the contract at the sum that you. Uh, you awarded it. So can I answer that for QuipMed? There is a letter here addressed to the then permanent secretary by dated 21st of June 2021 by QuipMed stating re award of contract for the emergency supply installation and maintenance of nine oxygen plants and construction in the various states. They acknowledge receipts of the letter dated 15th of June 2021 with the reference stated the knowledge received of the letter of award dated 15th of June 2021 with the reference number and stated that however sequel to the meeting held on the 4th of June 2021 with you sir the Honorable Pamsek then your Director of Procurement and the Director of Finance, we wish to bring your attention to some of the challenges observed that could adversely affect the project execution, namely the sudden surge in foreign exchange rates due to the dollar, recent global demand for oxygen plants and its components and accessories have resulted in hikes in oxygen plant prices, Prices offered by original equipment manufacturers in February, March 2021 are no longer tenable, and the challenges being faced at our seaports have adversely impacted on clearing timelines, resulting in delays in freight time and increase in freight costs. We hereby appeal to the Ministry for an upward review of the unit price of the contract sum to enable us to deliver within the time frame. We will appreciate if these concerns can be discussed and amicably and mutually beneficial position reached to further the execution of the contract. We await your further directives to guide our actions and planning. Thank you. This was signed by the managing, for managing director. Yes. Okay, my therapeutic. Yes. Okay. So, 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 um, before you awarded, before the contract was awarded initially, I'm sure that you also had quotations from some other uh, companies or contractors. And uh, probably there are some that um, also bidded or quoted uh, uh, sums that are lower than that of uh, equipment. But perhaps for considerations of technical expertise or whatever you are awarded to equipment. 
Now, did you also um, source alternate um, companies? Did you, did you consider alternate companies that could have offered that contract at the initial sum for which they were, they were approved? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairman. I will not know if at the time... They uh, the man in white. Hello. You are... You are you are causing. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Please, please don't uh, don't do that again. Eh? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, go ahead. I don't know if at the time they sought other companies, but I do know, based on what I was informed, that due to the uh, exchange rate at that time. Yeah, madam, I, I, yes. I get that point, but you see, if we say because we have funds, we have to just use the money, we have to spend the money. If you don't have up to that sum of money approved for you by the National Assembly, you could have also been able to solve the problem. So if we start going back and forth, and you are one contract to somebody, after all the due process has been done, and then the person comes up and uh, tells you that I can't do it again, and you are not considering you know, having alternate uh, vendors, only for us to have these figures. Anyway, Sir, an alternate vendor. We have, we have got, um, yes? If I may say, an alternate vendor equally wrote again, stating the same thing. Air separation. That's on a different contract. Yes, but the same oxygen plant. That's what I'm just saying. On a different contract. Of course, contractors are businessmen yes. now. Yes. They are human beings. They can hold a meeting somewhere. I'm not imputing uh, ill motive to them, but I'm saying they can meet, eh, hold a meeting somewhere and say we can get more money from government. <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, honourable colleague. Yeah, have, any other question, please? Yes, I have a question, madam. If you look at volume three of your submission. Page four. <laughs> we have eighteen companies that we are awarded contracts here, though some of them in multiple times. We have certificate of no objection for award of contract for the BPP. If you look at number one through four, you have Crystal Paco Limited. Project cost as requested, as requested, one billion six hundred fifty-three six twenty-five zero zero. BPP reviewed project. 1.477 cost of reduction 175 million now BPP re reviewed this and reviewed it reviewed it and cost it at 1.47 that is for crystal how much do you award that contract thank you honorable Member, sir, it goes down to the same thing with other. Uh, okay, can you show me? Yes. With the exception of these four companies that are listed on page four, the other companies where the BPP reviewed and gave you the cost. Uh, honorable member, sir. Air separation is one of them. Equipment is one of them. I know. I, okay, I the said, others, the I, others said the, the, okay. I, I, I listed the four companies. Okay, the others. Mentoring. Chairman. Are you, are you? Yeah, yeah. The honorable colleague, I understand you. You're asking them to reference the uh, BPP, the BPP um, approval. If you could just give me a moment. And why the variation in the cost? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay, there's uh, on the fact of also we're going to be rounding up with you in the other ten minutes, madam. There are quite a whole lot of gaps to fill from your documents and presentation. On the fact of my chairman, I remember on the fact of I represented before I do it to the airport to follow the federal constituency. I'm from the um, Mr. Sherman, my question is on, it's on uh, item 13 of this, uh, which has to do with the... Item 13 of the summary page, of yes, the summary document. Has, yes, which has to do with uh, 
procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at FMC Abelkuta. Uh, Honorable Worship, I believe you can bear me witness that when we went to Abelkuta for sightseeing, for oversight. <laughs> for oversight of recent, we equally found this particular item in their own book. So why is it repeated? Oh, you found it in the book of uh, FMC Abekuta as yeah, their own project? Yes, yes sir. So why is Are it? you sure it's the same, the same thing? Uh, we found it in their books and it's still the same it's in the narrator. Okay. So why, why Okay, are we that, that's a very here? important observation. Please, um, we have to note that. Um, yeah, because there will also be oversight to... I, I'm very interested in these oxygen production plants because um, if they are actually functional, that would be a very good one for us as a country. Uh, for us that, that, you know, that we have functional oxygen plants in so many locations. So we'll definitely be doing uh, an oversight to the project location. And please, uh, we have to take note of this. Uh, I don't know whether Madam followed. There's an over, there was an oversight visit to the Federal Medical Center Abekuta last week by a subcommittee of uh, the Public Account Committee. And they are saying that uh, they found from the submission of the FMC this same project listed as a project of the FMC Abekuta and not that of the Federal Ministry of Health. So we will we, we'll surely need to resolve this, uh, you know, this uh, controversy as it were. So please take note of that, and then we're going to be having um, uh, oversight visits, especially to uh, the six oxygen production plants, which you did in the six, uh, those six states, and a few other of this project. Uh, while we await you to supply further uh, documents and explanation on the things that we have observed, I have one last question for you before we... Uh, oh, you have a clarification to seek? Okay. Sorry, please. Yeah, they, they will supply the... And um, equipment. I don't know if you have it on page 16. That's referred to page, page, page 16 of this document. Which of the documents? The, Just. Oh. This document that starts, please. Can, Is that the volume two or one? Volume one. Volume one. Volume one. Please show that. Page 16. <coughs> All right, um, yes, page 16 of uh, volume one. So which item there, the first item? For uh, the table there shows that for item number three, emergency installation of supply, installation and maintenance of nine oxygen production plants and construction of plant houses in nine states of Kogi, Benue, uh, Kebi, Jigawa, Yobe, Cross River, Ekiti, Lagos, and Enugu states was given to Quipmed Therapeutics at the sum of 1.4 billion, 1.488 million, 262,500. And BPP reviewed the uh, uh, contract cost to 1 billion, 329,898. 613.49. Is that, is that, is that, if, okay, yeah, I can see that, but um, just a moment. Uh, BPP review to how much? 1.1,329,898,613. That, that's the uh, construction of that oxygen, it. nine oxygen production plants. Yeah, installation, yes. Is that the one? Yes, item number three. Item number two, rather. Okay, item number two is uh, air separation. You asked for equipment and supreme. No, just a moment. The one in reference here, yeah. handled by uh, M M Equipment Therapeutic Limited. That's what I'm referring to. Yes, that's number three. Was re was um, revised by BPP. BPP to how much? One point three. One point three two nine. Yes. So where is that on, on this, uh, your document, on the summary of the document you first presented, is, on, is item what? That is item number... Is item number two? Item number two. Yeah, but the contract sum here, 
is 1,527,898,732 Naira.49. And that was well above the sum which the BPP approved for the contract sum. Madam, are you following me? Yes, I am. I'm actually looking at my director procurement to find out. Yeah, but can you see that the figure yes. is at variance with what uh, was uh, approved yes, by the BPP? Yes. This one, the contract was awarded at 1.5 billion naira, and the BPP approved that you award at 1.3 billion naira. Um, no, the, um, on volume 1, page 16, yes sir, the first volume, page 16, and then we're, we're trying to tally the figure with what we have here. Um, according to the information on this from the Bureau of Public Procurement, in a letter dated 26th of April 2021, the contract to Cubemet Therapeutic Limited is to be awarded. You propose to award at 1.488, and they said you should award at 1.329. But from the submission you made, you awarded at 1.527.899 uh, um, uh, uh, which is well, well above the sum approved by the BPP for, the, for that particular contract. So what happened, madam? Uh, just give me a moment, sir, please. Let me see. Uh, uh, distinguished sir, uh, honorable. Yes, madam. Please, the letter of award given to them on page 24. It's a typographical error on our part. The letter of award. On page 24, of which document? Volume 1. The letter of award. To uh, equipment is actually the 1.329 as approved by BPP. No, just a moment, please. The letter of award is on page what? Page 24. Of, of which volume, of the volumes volume of this document? One. On the same volume one? one? Same volume one. No, volume one, what I have here is not a letter of award. What I have here is a tabulation, yeah. It's not a letter of award on my own page 24 here on volume one. And then, and then what, I don't understand. What, what do you mean by typographical error? Uh, are, you, are you disowning the figure of 1.527 billion? Uh, Hold on, Mr. Uh, Honorable Chairman, sir, please. It's volume two, not volume one. Directors, please. Volume two, page 20. Page 24. Page 24 of volume yes, two. Please. No, volu vol volume two is a letter. Yes. Volume the two, letter page of 24. Award. Yes. It's a letter of award to. Um, yeah, the equipment, and then yes. the total sum of the contract awarded here is one billion three hundred and twenty-nine thousand eight hundred ninety-eight nine hundred thirteen four point. Uh, I apologize point, for the earlier point four nine. Yes. No, it's not. It's not. Um, it's not. It's not about apology, madam. Let's get. Let's get our. Let's get our act uh, together. Just a moment, please. It's not, madam, you see, the, the problem is that the, the numbers do not tally. You agree with me? Use your microphone, ma'am. You agree with me that the numbers do not tally? Not and in the public account committee, we deal with figures, we deal with the laws, we deal with rules. So the figures here have to align because we are... You have done a tabulation of the total sum to arrive at the 8.960, which was released to you as COVID-19 fund. So the contract that was awarded here by your own document is to the tune of 1,527,898,000. Is that correct? Sir, can I ask the DFA who was there? Yes, he's on oath, so Thank he can you. speak. Thank you. Yes, DFA. Uh, DFA. You are on oath too, so you can, can, you can you? answer the question, please. I assist your permanent secretary.
uh, what is the difference on expenditure? I would say yes, we got value for money, honourable. Um, the incinerators for the hospitals, as it is, was given based on the specification by the hospitals. Not all hospitals have the same specifications. So every hospital has its own specification of the incinerator it wants, from my information. And so every hospital requested for, we sent out to them what are the specifications, you give us the specifications, and I would say that yes, we did get value for money for those incinerators that we have placed in all those hospitals. However, I would apologize for not giving you the exact states, because you said the states are not listed, yes. I would have to do that and tell you, please get your phone. But uh, why do we have 14 out of 37 states? I would like to say, sir, that I think it was based on need. I cannot say why exactly, since I wasn't there at the time. I'm just a few months in Federal Ministry of Health, but I was informed that it was based on need and it was for emergency procurement. So that was quickly done. But I want to believe that was it evenly spread? Based on what we read out, sir, there is in all the geopolitical zones, southwest, northeast, north central, southeast, south south, Irwa. South South, Calabar, Port Harcourt, Southwest, Northeast, Northwest. So I would say that yes, I was evenly spread to the six geopolitical zones. But I'm very sure that we would have in 2024 and going beyond that any state that has been excluded, any federal teaching hospital or federal medical center or specialty hospital that does not have an incinerator would definitely have because we've been having requests. So I'm sure by 2024, sir, you would know that we would have, if there is any request for an incinerator, that they would get it, sir. So if uh, your state is not captured, my apologies. We will look into that, sir. If there's a teaching hospital, a medical center, and a specialty hospital within that state, federal, federal, we would do that, sir. As to uh, one billion x against some had two billion. On the same matter? Yes. Sir, please. Yes, sir. You said something very interesting. Yes. You said those states that didn't receive or that were not accommodated, they will receive from I said, 20, I said any federal. Any state. Any federal. Wait, teaching. wait. I know what you said. Yeah. And they will receive from 2024 if the need arises or if they request. Why can't your agency go to all the federal medical centers in the whole country and find out the status of any incinerator they may have and make sure that everything there is working and if there's need to change what they have, you provide it for them instead of when they request? Because you don't know when the next national emergency will arise. So, and when it arises and they, what they have is not okay, then they, you start looking for emergency funds. <clears throat> so, why don't you do your own part by investigating whether all federal medical centers are properly equipped with these letters? Thank you very much, Honorable. We'll do that. Well noted and well taken, sir. Thank you. Why was with the wrong valves and are yet to wrong valves for the oxygen plants, the wrong valves, and they are yet to replace them. However, all the plants have been supplied, installed, and the trainings done, but they need to change the valves because they've submitted and we were, they were told to change them before the rest of the payments will be made. As for equipment therapeutic limited, they have supplied all nine plants, installed and trained the staff. However, two of the plants developed problems. 
not long after installation and the defects are being corrected. Also, I am informed that one of the components, an oxygen compressor or booster, and booster supplied, was supplied but though, though functional, is not according to the specification that was given. Because specifications are given and sometimes they give you the wrong equipment without what was specified. So the wrong, what was supplied was with the wrong specification, so they were told to change that. However, in the ministry, uh, this honorable members, the staff of the oxygen desk were there to supervise the installation, the commissioning, and the training of each of these plants. And all the staff were trained for the prevention and maintenance of these plants. And since the ministry, through the Department of Hospital Services, advises the ministry on what is needed and the correct specifications for the job completion, because they have to give us a job completion certificate before the rest of the payment is made. That is why we are yet to complete payment and until they correct those defects that the ministry has informed them about before the remaining payment of 721 519679.34 will be given. I so submit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam. Uh, honorable colleagues, that is the uh, summary of the presentation of the expenditure. I have to ask questions or comments or observations. Uh, uh, honorable Dr. Wyvie. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. There, it's not just for all contractors. There is a template, or would I say a booklet, that gives and specifies all uh, companies that have to do with medical equipment. So it is those who are with that booklet and approved by the BPP that can procure goods for the Federal Ministry of Health. As to why it is only two, I cannot say. I do not have an answer as to why it is only two. But I know that there are specific contractors that can bid for equipment for health. How many contractors bid I would, can I, if you, I may, honorable, let me confer with my director. Okay, uh, please procurement. do that. Yes, please. So while your directors are, are getting the microphone with you, um, and you have uh, said you were the desk officer that handled this procurement, where's your director, meanwhile? Oh, you are the director? Were you the director when the contract was awarded? No. Oh, okay. So, uh, go ahead and uh, give us an explanation on this uh, okay. contract uh, variation. Okay. Thank you, Chairman, Honorable Members, ladies and gentlemen. What happened then was that the first um, award letters that were given to them, I submit specification as usual. I did my market survey, but I submitted specification to procurement, but procurement thought otherwise. They did another market survey and they awarded the letters all the contractors returned the letters after about a month or two that they were not able to do the contract at those sum because of the volatility of the exchange rate as at that point. Please remember that these equipments are not manufactured in this country. All these equipment are being procured and shipped to the country. The only thing in this country is the build is the housing of the oxygen plant. So because of the volatility all the contractors returned the document that they were not able to do it at that price. So procurement made another presentation now to BPP, which was approved. We went back to fake again with the permanent secretary then, director of hospital services, Dr. Adebi, and this was now approved at this present rate. That was exactly what was the what procurement I process used in this uh, used in this procurement? Was it by the public tendering or was it by selective tendering? It was by selective tendering, but okay. there were over, yeah. there were almost about seven or eight companies that applied that, or that were selected to bid because, like the permanent secretary said, the jobs in Ministry of Health are very special jobs. A lot of people... Yes, no, please, I'm, I'm coming to that. I, I understand that. Now, now the issue we are, we are examining 
is not actually peculiar only to this company, to M Equipment. I can see that it affects almost all the contracts that you awarded. You had you had uh, an initial approval for a contract sum, and then you awarded the contract in the month of June, and came back to reaward contracts in the month of September, if I'm correct, September October. Uh, at uh, so in the month of October for contract sums you know higher than what was initially approved by the uh, by the public procurement uh, uh, by the Bureau of Public Procurement and that that raises a lot of questions uh, even even about the uh, competence of your procurement department because you know you have to have value for money and you have to be very very efficient in the expenditure of public uh, public public resources and you said you submitted something earlier that the public procurement did something different. So what's your own department? Hospital services, sir. I am, we are the user department, the department of hospital services. We are the user department. We are the technical department. So we, we, we make the submission of the specifications to them. To the procurement department? Yes, sir. Okay, so what, what are the, can you give us copies of the submission you made to the uh, procurement department? Can we have copies of the earlier submission you made to them on each and every one of these contracts? Do you have them? That's the specification, sir. The specification, the bill of quantity. No, I don't have the specification here. The bill of quantity. What, what is the content of this submission you said you made to the procurement department? What does it contain? And what did it contain? It contains the oxygen plant in itself. It contains the items. The items. Good one. And the 60 cylinders. Ah. Those are still items. In the documents, you have the items. Do you have the specifications? Of course, it's written. Do there. you have the quantity? Do you have the sum? Do you have the sum? We, we don't submit the sum. We submit the specification, the quantity. There were 38 oxygen plants. So you no, come. You submitted the specifications. Yes. With which the procurement department now acted and advised the PPP to get a no a certificate of no objection. Is yes. that correct? Yes, sir. So what changed? What changed that you don't have a difference of over 300 million naira on Thank one contract? I'm sure if you do a total tabulation. We'll be talking about billions now. Sir, like I said, the volatility of the exchange rate at that point was very, very high. As we were, as we were making the first submission, I think it was still 300 and something. By the time they were given a word letter, it had gone to 400. So they asked for a variation. That's the meaning. They asked for a contract variation. That's the meaning. Okay, is that supported by the contracts that you signed with them? read out the portion that supports that uh, approval of that variation in the contract that you signed with one of the companies. Just read out the portion that supports the approval of this variation. Read it out, please. Um, Mr. Chairman, volume two of the document we submitted on page 22, dated August 13th, 2021. Page two, uh, page vo volume two, volume page 22, two. yes, page madam. 22. Dated August 13, 2021. The Director General of the BPP. Madam, that's not the question. You're not oh, answering the question. Sorry, what was the question? Stick to the question asked. What was the question? The question is, the variation that was approved that led to the issuance of a fresh letter of approval is supported by which of the clauses of the contract that you signed with them? That's what I'm saying. I'm coming. Let me look at the contract agreement, sir. Apparently, uh, Mr. Chairman, from what I'm looking at, the contract was signed in November. So it was after the variation had been made. Of the 1.527. Okay, Mama, if, the, if the variation has been made, yes. how do you do variation without 
start in the contract. How do you do that? Uh, I mean, the contract has to be started. You have now to check the cost of what is costing you to do the contract. And you say this amount that you, you issued or the amount you approved for this contract is not enough. Then you create a variation. Please, can the director be people? In, uh, in, a, in, addition to that, in addition to that very valid observation by my colleague, when you also write out the letter of, when you issue the letter of uh, award of contract, the one you issued uh, uh, in the month of June, I'm sure that you also indicated the period with which the contractor is to either accept or reject the contract. And I'm sure that uh, there must have been a communication from the contractor based on the letter of award. Was there such communication? So i answer that in addition to the observation. I, I, I don't know whether you understand me, madam. I do, sir. Can the Excellent. director procurement... Yes, as, as long as he's on oath, he can, he can speak. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Should give, uh, members. Uh, the, when the contracts were awarded, sir, the con from the document that we read, the contractors went to the market. They discovered that the prices, the contract price, were not realistic. I think they now wrote back to the ministry. The ministry now wrote to BPP. But, but uh, Uncle, you are so, going back sir, to the same sir, issue that you have said. You are still telling us what you have said before. Sir, there is no sign agreement yet, sir. The only was there a no? Listen now. Was there a letter of acceptance between June and October? Was there a letter from the contractor? You wrote a contractor. He got your letter, and in the letter. There, there is a paragraph where you are you you made mention. Um, the letter is on page what again, please? The first letter of award on volume. Um, page twenty-four. Volume is it volume two? Yeah, page twenty-four. Volume two, page twenty-four. Please indicate your, this. This this is your paragraph two. The paragraph two of your letter says. Please indicate your acceptance or otherwise in writing within one week of receipt of this letter. That's the first sentence in that second paragraph. Indicate acceptance or otherwise in writing within one week of receipt of this offer. So where is that letter of receipt or otherwise or rejection that were supposed, was supposed to have been given to you uh, by the 20th of June or 21st of June? Because the letter didn't... 15th of June 2021. So by, by 22nd of June 2021, by virtue of this letter, you should, have, you should have got a letter of acceptance or refusal by the contractor. So where is that letter? That's the question. Mr. Chairman, sir. Yes, please. From what I've learned, there was no acceptance, sir. How? So have you awarded the contract without acceptance? Have you awarded a contract because in a contract, there must be an offer. Now put off your microphone so that the honorable colleague can use his. In a contract, there must be an offer and an acceptance. Then consideration, which is the money you are paying. Who authorizes you to pay to a contractor that has not accepted your offer? Um, chairman, sir. Chairman, sir. Yes, uh, uh, okay, honorable uh, Amos Magaji. Um, thank you very much. Um, Director, procurement, do you have BPP approval for the amount you... Because there is variance between the amount BPP approve and then the amount you, 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 uh, uh, the contract was offered, the amount. So do you have a different approval? Or this is just the approval you work and you just on your own hide the... The contract song. Thank you very much, sir. So as I said earlier, sir, a letter was issued earlier to the contractors. Yeah, go ahead now. Go ahead. Yes, the price was not realistic to them. They now requested for open review. When they when they actually letter in the first place before the committee and all the documents that I will present before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you.
State. Distinguished colleagues, our guests, Basi Akwais, my name, I speak for Kala. Samuel Godwin, representing the Auto General for the Federation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dio. I'm from Kogi State. Thank you. Good morning. Letter. We looked at what you had requested for. And I would like to first of all apologize for the not numbering of what was presented, presented to you. My apologies for that. The Federal Ministry of Health, when we received the records, uh, the disbursement from our records, show we were paid in two tranches. The first tranche was 6.460 billion, and then the second tranche was 2.5. And the first tranche of 6.46 was for the supply installation and maintenance of oxygen plants, while the second tranche of 2.5 billion was for the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerators. So for the ministry, sir, they are up to 18 items on what was submitted. And if I may crave your indulgence so I can take it one item after the other. Yes, please go ahead, madam. So item one was for the emergency supply installation, maintenance of six oxygen production plants, and construction of plant houses in six states at the cost of 1.018-599-722.69. And the date of award of this uh, contract was on the 15th of October 2021, and it was given to Mrs. Supreme Meditech Limited, with their address stated as 14 as Haile Selassie Street, Asukuru, Abuja. This, the st uh, status of this project is completed. It was started and completed. The second item, which is the emergency supply, installation and maintenance of nine oxygen plants, of nine oxygen production plants and construction of plant houses in nine states at the sum of 1.527898613.49 award was equally given on the 5th of October 2021 to Mrs. Kripmet Theoropathic Limited with an address in Ademola Crescent, Buse 2. This is still an ongoing project, but what has been paid thus far is 1.145911960.10. I would uh, please read everything out and then tell you why some are still ongoing, Mr. Chairman, sir. For number three, Emergency supply, installation and maintenance of 13 production plants and construction of plant houses in 12 states and the FCT at the sum of 2.206-964-663.93, award given on the 5th of October 2021 as well to Mrs. Air Separation Nigeria Limited with an address at Ikeja, Lagos. This is completed the total sum paid to the contractor. The fourth item is the emergency supply, installation, maintenance of 10 oxygen production plants in 10 states at the sum of 1.697665126.10. Award equally given. Yeah, ju just uh, just uh, make sure that you indicate is it million or billion just billion, for the purpose I'm so of. Sorry, billion. Yeah, I can. Uh, yes, billion. Billion, yeah, I can yes. see from the document. Yes. But for those who don't have the document, oh, we'll be listening okay. to you. My apologies. So just, uh, yes. 1.697665126.10 billion. Award given to MS, uh, Messrs. Presto Paco Limited on the 5th of October 2021 with an address at Oji Uzo Kalu House Central Business District, Abuja. The sum of 1.358132100.15 billion has been paid to the contractor and it's still ongoing. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at the Federal Medical Center, Kefi, at the sum of 178,820,000 Naira. And this was given to Mrs. Mendrix Integrated Services Limited, award on the, awarded on the 10th of August, 2021, with an address at Amazon Street, Maitama. The complete sum has been paid and this is completed. 
The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of the incinerator house at the Federal Medical Center, Bida, Niger State, as the contract sum of 177,990,000 to Mrs. Mendricks Integrated Services Limited on the 10th of August 2021, and this is completed. Payments all made. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at the University Teaching Hospital in Lorin at the contract sum of 178,400,000 awarded to Messrs. Mendrix Integrated Services Limited on the 10th of August 2021 with the same address, Meitama Abuja. This is completed, all sums paid. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of the incinerator house at the Federal Teaching Hospital, Gombe, at the contract sum of 178 million, 850 million naira, 850,000 naira, to Messrs. Mendrix Integrated Services Limited, awarded on the same date of 10th of August 2021, the same address of 13 Amazon Street, Maitama, and this has been completed and all sums paid. The next item is the procurement an installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at the Federal Medical Center, Umwahia, given to Messrs. Alekram Integrated Services Nigeria Limited on the 10th of August at the contract sum of 177,990,000. And this has been addressed at number three, Ibrahim Musa Avenue, Malali, New Extension, Kaduna. This has been completed. The next item, which is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at the University, University of Calabar Teaching Hospital at the contract sum of 179,200,000 was given to Messrs. Alekram Integrated Services with the same address of Malali New Extension Kaduna at the contract sum of 179 on the 10th of August and this has been completed. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of the incinerator house at the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital Port Harcourt at the contract sum of 179,200,000 Mrs. Alekram Integrated Services Nigeria Limited on the 10th of August 2021 was when the award was given and this has been completed, all payments made. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of the incinerator house at Irua Specialist Teaching Hospital, that's in Edo State. This award was given to Messrs. Alekram, also Integrated Services Nigeria Limited, addressed at New Extension, Malali New Extension, Kaduna, awarded on the 10th of August 2021 at the contract sum of 178,400,000. This has been completed all payments made. The next item on the list, Mr. Chairman, honorable members, is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of the incinerator house at the Federal Medical Center, Abeokuta, at the contract sum of 177,950,000 to Mr. Stepcho, Nigeria Limited, with an address at Imo Crescent, Garki Abuja, on the 10th of August was when the contract was awarded and this has been since completed. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at the ATBU Teaching Hospital, Bauchi, were awarded to Monsieur Stepcho Nigeria Limited on the 10th of August at the contract sum of 178 million 30, 30, 000, with an address at Imo Crescent, Gariki Abuja, and this has been completed as well. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of the incinerator house at the University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital, Meduguri, given to Mr. Stepcho Nigeria Limited, awarded on the 10th of August 2021, at the contract sum of 178,850,000, and this has been completed. The next is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator at the 
Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Lagos, given as well to Mr. Steptro Nigeria Limited, awarded on the 10th of August 2021 at the contract sum of 177,950,000, and this has been completed. The next item is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at the Federal Medical Center, building Kebi State, awarded to Mr. Steptro Nigeria Limited on the 10th of August at the contract sum of 178,030,000, and this has been completed, all payments made. The last but not the least is the procurement and installation of medical waste incinerator and construction of incinerator house at the Federal Medical Center, Guso, at the contract sum of 178820000 awarded to Mr. Steptro Nigeria Limited on the 10th of August 2021, and this has been completed. However, I would like to state, uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, that the ministry owes the total sum of 721,519,679 Naira 34 Kogu for the two companies that are yet to complete the supply and installation of the oxygen plants, which are Equipment Therapeutic Limited, at, who has a contract sum of 300 and 381,986,653.39 remaining, and Cresto Paco Limited that has 339,533,025.95 remaining. And the reason why this has not been concluded, Mr. Chairman, sir, is that the companies Equipment Therapeutic Limited and Cresto Paco that are yet to, be, to complete their jobs is because for Cresto Paco Limited, they supplied the cylinder. Um, I will invite you to speak to the um, summary of the document that you presented. They are, they are not paged, but I can see they are like five pages, five or six pages. Um, you can please speak to that document before we go into... Uh, the question and answer session. Thank you. Oh, before then, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have uh, two other members who just came in. and Gentlemen, honorable colleagues, our guest, my name is Abdul Malik Abdul Rahim Danga. You sit down, man. Sit down, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, distinguished members. Thank you for having us here this morning. My name is Daju Sechelong, MNI. Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Health. And with me are my direct... One, two, four. I, Daju Kachelo, do solemnly swear and affirm that the evidence I shall give before the committee and all the documents that I will present before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you very much. You can please go ahead and sign the forms that you have with you. Sit down, please. Let everyone you, should, should speak. Sitting Good down. Good morning, Chairman, distinguished members. I am Dr. Jimo Olawale Salaudi, MNI. I'm Director of Hospital Services, Federal Ministry of Health. Thank you. 20 and 2021. Uh, let me just uh, quickly say this again as we uh, resume this hearing. Um, I read in some of our uh, media that uh, House of Reps commences. It's actually not a commencement. This is a hearing that has happened for at least over two months. And so we're just uh, resuming the hearing on the COVID-19 expenditure. And the whole purpose of the hearing, as captured by the motion which the House passed, is to ensure that um, we are transparent and accountable in the expenditure of the uh, various sums of money running into uh, over 600 billion naira that was released by the federal government of Nigeria to combat the COVID-19 pandemic and the resultant effect of the pandemic in, in our public works. 
um, that was why some of the funds were given to various agencies and ministries that are not health related as an intervention to replace the economy after the um, uh, various lockdowns that uh, uh, COVID uh, caused in the country. And uh, I want to assure everyone appearing before this committee once again that we're going to be very, very uh, fair. Uh, we're going to be very uh, firm. And we're going to be very, very lawful in all that we do because that is the hallmark of the 10th Assembly of the House of Representatives. So I want to urge all ministries, departments, and agencies that will be appearing before us once again to please uh, note that we will highly appreciate their cooperation in terms of giving us um, uh, facts and figures uh, without uh, diluting them. And uh, I also want to use the same opportunity to also uh, sound a note of warning to those uh, ministry, departments, and agencies that have consistently shunned the invitation of the House of Reps through this committee on the COVID-19. Uh, by the publication that we made in the uh, Punch and Daily Trust of the 4th of January 2024, we did say there, and we meant it, that that was the last time we were going to extend the invitation to any MDA. Uh, anyone who fails to appear without justifiable reason will leave us with no other option than to resolve the issues uh, in investigation against them. It will be assumed that they do not have any justification for the expenditure of the monies uh, released to them on COVID-19. And this is very, very, very important um, for those who haven't come and haven't sent in any communication to show that they had a justifiable reason for not coming, we will be taking a position that those issues in investigation are resolved against them. Thank you very much. So, Secretariat, please, can you administer the oath on the Permanent Secretary and any other person who will be testifying in this uh, investigative hearing uh, today? May I know you, madam? I'm sorry, maybe my glasses are disturbing me. Who are you, ma'am? Which medium? Eh? Okay. You are part of the press corps. Can the press call confirm that she's part of you? Yes. Ah, okay. Thank you very much, yes. Uh, the continuation of our hearing on... Um, the hearing on um, COVID-19 expenditure. And I want you to please... Um, the Secretary is just informing me now that uh, you have refused to make any written presentation to this um, honorable committee in spite of the fact that you have been written on two occasions and we have also made publication on two occasions in national dailies the first time was in three national dailies giving you a time a schedule of appearance the second one was the one on the 4th of uh, january in the punch and daily trust giving you a time also for appearance and i've been told that in spite of all that you have refused to make any presentation to the Public Account Committee on how you spent a sum of... Um, how much is it, did you receive again for COVID-19? About uh, 12 billion. About 12 billion. You got like... Uh, you got like um, 12 point something billion naira for uh, COVID-19 expenditure that you have not made any presentation to this committee. I'm also told by the um, committees, especially the team that went to the southwest on oversight, and the team that went to south-south um, on oversight, that your officials refused to cooperate with them to take them to location of some of the projects that we uh, saw that um, was claimed to have been spent. I mean, to have been used. Uh, on, on which you use the sum of money released to the federal, by the federal government to you as COVID-19 expenditure fund, and that uh, from the southwest, headed by the Right Honorable Oshoba, that your zonal head refused all entreaties to make him to work together with them to take them to the project location. The same thing in the south-south. Um, and I said this is a good opportunity for you to start off by responding. The first response is on why you have refused 
to honor previous invitations and why you have refused to also respond to the request for documents on how this sum of money was expended. So you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairman. Uh, and uh, I just want to uh, categorically say that um, we didn't refuse to honor it uh, due to some circumstances. Um, it wasn't deliberate at all, uh, Honorable Chairman, and there's no uh, disrespect at all uh, that was intended. There was no uh, refusal to submit the documents. Uh, we have actually uh, been working very hard on it, even with the uh, side visits. We struggled a little uh, with the timing because, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't around uh, when the initial letter came in. Uh, so I had instructed that uh, you know the zonal coordinators are giving all the uh, necessary support uh, to actually um, uh, be able to administer those site visits. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go all uh, according to a plan because I also came back and found out that some of the... You said you instructed your zonal coordinators to cooperate with the yes, uh, subcommittees? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Can we have a copy of that correspondence, the correspondence you sent to your zonal offices to tell them that uh, they should that there's a, a, a team was coming and that they should work together with them. Can you submit a copy Ye yes, of sir. that correspondence? Yes, sir. We can. We can make that copy uh, okay. available, sir. All right. Uh, and, uh, most importantly, sir, um, I I sincerely apologize uh, for uh, for this mishap, uh, and I assure you, uh, we'll be on top of it. Uh, and even today, to be very honest with you, uh, honourable chairman, uh, honourable members. Uh, I know that uh, the communication was done uh, in the publications uh, and the newspapers you mentioned. Uh, from my side and uh, from the executive director's side, uh, we were working very hard to make sure that uh, everything with the zonal visits were, were being done. Uh, and we couldn't even uh, see that uh, we were appearing this morning until uh, last night. You know, and last night I tried to reach out uh, just so that uh, you know, I can plead uh, for additional time, please, so that we can bring together all the documents uh, that have been requested for and uh, put this issue uh, to bed uh, once and for all. But the side visits, I assure you, uh, Honorable Chairman, uh, I'm looking at it myself directly to make sure that we don't have uh, this sort of hiccups. Uh, I know that some of them were successful. Uh, I know some people, uh, I had a chat with the, with the clerk, before we came in, they successfully went to uh, Edo and they were given access, even though there were initial difficulties, but they managed to resolve, uh, you know, that. So it's not all, it didn't go all bad. Some of it went well uh, and others didn't go so well. Uh, but I'll make sure now that uh, I go and look into it to make sure that all the facilities have been granted access. Uh, I so submit uh, honorable chairman and honorable uh, members. Honorable colleagues, uh, any? Hi. 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 That the evidence that shall give before the committee and all the documents that are presented before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Mr. Enzi, I'm from Pipe of State. Uh, Abo Chair, uh, a very major the pass on financial regulation. And uh, the financial regulations of the federal government, which is one of the guiding uh, laws and uh, regulations affecting the expenditure of, of government funds and accounting of government funds in section 3112, 3115, 3105, 3101 has outlined different penalties for persons holding government offices, especially accounting officers who refuse to give account of how monies are expended to the Attorney for the Federation and to the National Assembly, which is the body continually empowered to get such accounts uh, audited and reported on. And let me quickly add this. Section 111 of the financial regulation even goes further to say that even where an accounting officer 
has ceased to hold such an office by virtue of retirement, resignation, or whatever it is, that person can still be called upon at any time to account for the monies which were released by the government during his tenure. And in this case, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of uh, Industry, Trade and Investment, as at the time of this um, expenditure, and all other persons in the ministry as at now who are supposed to give account, the, the, the former permanent secretary and the current permanent secretary are affected by this motion to refund the sum of 75 billion.